A closer look at transaction atomicity. A transaction is a sequence of instruction that needs to execute atomically. Roughly speaking, a transaction executes and terminates in one of two states, abort or commit. If it aborts, its effects are made invisible. If it commits, its effects are made visible, and everything happens as if it was executed at a single point in time. The combination of these two properties is what is called atomicity. Let's look at that through a simple example. Assume we have a transaction T1 that does the following, and a transaction T2 that does the following. The fact that these two sequences are transactions mean that the programmer has stipulated that very fact by writing, for instance, the following. So let's see the meaning of atomic here uh, slightly more precisely. Let's depict the following situation where T1 executes concurrently with T2. Assume initially that x equals 1, y equals 0, and z equals 1. Basically, the fact that T1 and T2 are atomic means that these transactions should execute in a way that prevents z from being 0, namely z from reading x after we subtracted 1 and y before we added 1. So this is the fact that z should not be equals to zero is ensured by the very notion of atomicity. More specifically, the concept of serializability means that a value z here read by a committed transaction t2 should be a value that would have been produced by a sequential execution of the transactions. In this case, we have only t1 and t2. So in this case, this means that, for instance, value z should be a value that could have been produced by a sequential execution of committed transactions. So either T1 and T2 or T2 and T1. In both cases, C should be 1. This value of Z1 is considered a good value with respect to serializability. Let's assume we have another transaction now, T3, that does the following. Increments X. And notice that T3 terminates before T2 starts. If this transaction T3 commits, then serializability says again that Z should be a value that could have been produced by a sequential execution of committed transaction. Now we would have three committed transactions. So the value of Z could be either one if we had T1, T2, and then T3, or it could be two if we had T3, for example, T1, and then T2. So both cases are possible. But this case here is a little bit weird now because T3 has terminated before T2 has started. And yet the value Z doesn't take into account the fact that we have added something to X. So if we're talking about bank accounts and we added a million in X before starting transaction T2, then we are expecting to see the, this million here. But serializability doesn't say anything about that. So there is a stronger version of serializability called strict serializability. And this says that the values read by committed transactions could have been indeed produced by a sequential execution of committed transactions, respecting real time. So meaning that this sequential of execution of transaction should be such that if in real time a transaction T3 terminates before transaction T2, then in this sequential execution T3 should appear before. This means that the option here is forbidden. The only option that are possible are all options where T3 comes before T2. So either T1 can come first, or T1 comes here, or T1 comes here. But in all cases, T3 should become, come before T2. And it's easy to see that in this case, the only option is C equals 2. And this is strict serializability. In both cases, whether we consider serializability or strict serializability, in both cases, the property insured, the guarantee provided, has to do with values read by committed transactions. If, for example, T2 is not committed by, but aborted, we don't really care, serializability and strict serializability don't really care what the value will be read here. So it could be that Z equals 0. So in a sense, these two properties do not re restrict the value of Z if it's a value read by an aborted transaction. So this might be okay 
in this very in, in this very situation because we might consider that this transaction would be cancelled anyway. But let's look at a slightly more complicated case where T2 is not assigning x plus y to z, but let's assume that it's assigning 1 over x plus y. In this case, if z indeed equals 0, this means that we will be dividing 1 by 0 here and possibly blowing up the full program. And this is clearly undesirable. The property of opacity is a strong variant of strict serializability that says values read by transactions, be they committed or aborted, could have been produced by a sequential execution of committed transactions respecting real time. This would mean that the value of z should never be zero, even if the transaction that is reading it eventually, eventually aborts. This is a stronger variant which have, has an impact on how we guarantee, uh, how we implement transactional monitors and transactional memory.